Hey friends, welcome back to part two of the Legion review series. Now this video, I'll be covering the M500 mouse. So if you have not seen part one or the first video of the series, there will be a link up here or down in the description below where I covered the K500 keyboard. So check that out if you have not. And another announcement I want to make is that the next video that I upload, there will be a giveaway because I want to show my appreciation for you guys for watching my content and supporting my channel. I really, really appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for helping me reach 2,000 subscribers, and that is what the giveaway is for, so stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the M500 mouse review. The M500 mouse comes with an MSRP of 70 US dollars, but at the time of making this video, Lenovo's website has it down for only 46 bucks, and the same deal is going on Amazon as well. First off, looking at the appearance, it's definitely ergonomic with a neutral matte color finish. It's very minimal with its seven programmable buttons through the Legion accessory software. The sides of the mouse do have a plastic textured grip as well as the entire body of the mouse itself is also made of mostly plastic. Scroll wheel feels smooth and the clicking sound is not too loud. Actually, it's pretty average sounding compared to other gaming mice on the market. Here's a quick sound test. Now, let's talk numbers. The weight of the M500 mouse is on the heavier side, weighing roughly 110 grams out of the box. The mouse does have a 10 gram removable weight attached by default. You can take it out like so to make it lighter. As for the dimensions, it's 4.8 inches long, 2.9 inches wide, and 1.6 inches tall. For those of you who prefer the metric system, that translates to 122 by 74.6 and 41.7 millimeters respectively. The mouse does have your typical Omron switches at 50 million clicks and one of the newer optical PMW3389 sensor which goes up to 16,000 dpi. The bottom of the mouse does use what seems to be your standard Teflon feet for smooth gliding and it does have onboard memory for storing up to 3 profile settings. It has a 1.8 meter braided USB 2.0 cable and three programmable RGB zones using the software which we are about to jump into right now. The Legion accessory software is a pretty clean and easy interface to use. As mentioned in my previous part one video, it's similar to how Corsair's IQ software works. First tab, you pick your profile. As you can see here, there are three preset ones here by default, and you can absolutely customize them however you want. Then you have your actions tab up next, where you would be able to create and record new macros, new media controls, and new mouse button settings. What this does is it lets you switch the functions of each button and interchange them. For example, if you wanted the right button to be the left click instead and vice versa, not sure why you would want that in this right-handed only mouse, but that's pretty much what the new mouse setting feature does. Third tab is the lighting. There are three programmable zones, which would be the scroll wheel labeled A, then it's the logo on the back side of your mouse labeled as B, then the underside of the mouse labeled as C. First, you would pick the zone you want to customize and then move down here to select your effect where you would have static, breathing, rainbow, and random. Note on the breathing effect, there's two columns here to customize and it appears to what makes the mouse breathe only between two colors nothing more than that. Then there's surface tuning where it would allow you to calibrate your mouse to the specific surface of your mouse pad. You hit start here and then it will ask you to move your mouse in a figure eight pattern and it would then record the data to calibrate your mouse. Last is the performance tab. There are five different DPI settings by default and you can adjust each one to your preferences and toggle through them using your DPI up and down buttons on the top of the mouse. You can also turn off some of the profiles in case you don't need that many settings to scroll through. There's also your polling rate here on the side, 
I always leave mine at 1000 Hz since that equates to the 1 millisecond response time, which is the fastest you'll be able to get. Okay, so here are my thoughts on the M500 mouse. First off, I just want to say that these types of ergonomic mice aren't quite a common or popular choice among gamers. Uh, professional gamers and casual gamers alike, through my experience and observations of watching esports, reading through player profiles, uh, talking to my friends who I've played competitive PC gaming for over 15 years and also my own history of trying out many different types of gaming mice. So like personally, I'd much rather have a conventional shaped ambidextrous symmetrical shaped mouse, um, but that's just me. now. That doesn't mean that everybody's like this and I do know that there are a very few or maybe some people out there that do prefer or like using ergonomic shaped mice for uh, gaming. Now for me, I think majority of the audience would actually pick up a more conventional shaped mouse. Just That's just my perspective on it. And a mouse like the Legion M500, I know that although it's catered towards gaming, I feel like this is more better for like office work, something like that. Okay, the next part I want to talk about is uh, regarding the Lenovo accessory software. There's a feature in there where it allows you to bind and set media controls to your mouse buttons. Now, if you guys have not seen the first part of this series where I covered the K500 keyboard, um, I talk about MIDI controls a little bit more extensively. Regarding two keyboards, I think it's totally fine because there's more keys that you can bind it and macro it to. But when it comes to MIDI controls and binding them to a mouse, I, I think that's pretty pointless and useless. Uh, I do think that there are more essential functions to bind to your mouse. Um, honestly, if Lenovo just deleted that feature for the M500, uh, mouse in the software. I don't think anybody would be offended to be honest. Um, yeah, so that's just my take on it. And with everything being said, I think the Legion M500 mouse, based on the shape of it, the hardware design, it's hard for me to recommend it as a gaming mouse, but I think it's fine as a regular mouse, like an office mouse, that's totally cool. But for gaming, I don't see it being a very popular choice. But again, I'm not speaking for everybody. Like I mentioned before, there are some or maybe a few people out there that do prefer a ergonomic uh, mice or mouse like the M500 from Legion. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to know what your uh, perspective is on my review on the M500 um, and also thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed this review. And as always, subscribe for more content like this. I really appreciate your time in watching my content. Stay tuned for the next video that I'll be uploading. It has to do with a giveaway. So I will see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, and also stay tuned for part three of the series. That's where I'll be covering the H500 headset. So yeah, now peace.